Environmentalists are emphasizing the need for regulatory agencies to live up to their responsibilities and be more transparent in monitoring activities of petrol stations to prevent underground water pollution. And this is coming against the backdrop of complaints from residents of Abdullahi streets in Akoka Yaba area of Lagos, whose water table has been destroyed following leakages from a petrol station sited in their community. Take a listen. Early last year in February, I remember having a conversation with my sister about how our water smelled like it had petrol in it, but we dismissed it. We didn't, we thought it, it came from the tank. In fact, we just didn't link it to the petrol station. I went away for some time. I came back in August, and the first thing my brother said to me, he was house sitting for me, was that I couldn't turn on, that I, I shouldn't, that we didn't have any more water, and that we couldn't pump water because the total filling station, their tank had developed a leak and it had um, thousands of liters of premium into spirit had leaked into the surrounding groundwater, into the soil. Um, so that was in August, but on talking to my neighbors, because I, I, I tried to piece the story together, talking to my neighbors, I found that the people that were right next to us had started smelling the petrol in their water two months before. Again, nobody linked it to the Total Filling Station because you would think automatically that a company like Total would have safety measures in place or safety devices in place as well so that they can see if there's any kind of leak. Anyway, so the story as I gather it, because I said I'm not, I wasn't around at the time, was that they started pumping water in my compound and every day they noticed that this thing smells more and more like petrol every time they open the taps. So one day they decided to the, the neighbors decided to meet. I have two other I had three other neighbors at the time in the compound. They decided to meet and pump this water but bypass it so that it wouldn't enter the, the tank but actually come out um, on the ground so that they could see it. They described it as being white, as being foamy, and smelling very, very strongly of petrol. Now there's a border the, the wall that um, where they had pumped this water to, you know, there was a, a gutter there and some of the water was going off into the gutter that was on the other side of the wall. On the other side of the wall, we have some petty traders that we've been trying to get rid of. One of them, Fryzian, her coal fell into the water. So that entire length of gutter now had the water that my neighbors had been pumping. Her coal fell into the water and the entire length of that gutter caught fire. Caught fire. They went to the filling station, they met a man there, and they told him that there was a problem and he had to come back with them to see. He refused to come. In fact, my neighbors were, my immediate neighbors were quite upset with him. He refused to come. But there was a lady there who came back with them, and once she noticed this, she said to them, oh, please don't pump any more water. We're going to address this. I also sent a letter to the town, and in the letter I asked them to do certain things. For instance, um, incipient, make sure that we had a fire station that could respond to any sort of fires, you know, and prepare us. A man called Shegun Toikumo called me from their office and told me that they had been receiving reports, and their reports say that there's no more um, hydrocarbon in the gutter, you know, and that the threat for fire had been much reduced. Um, it's been seven months now. We are still receiving water from the town. I've asked them and La Sepa several times for results of the tests they have been conducting. They claim that they've done some remediation work. I've asked for tests, I've asked for material. And because I understand, I can read them and I understand them, I thought they would give them to me. Up till today, as I sit before you, I don't have anything. I received a call, again from my brother, who have, who house sits for me when I'm, whenever I'm not in town. And he said that the total filling station had come and they wanted to dig a borehole. 
which was very strange. They didn't contact me. They had actually just bought the walkers. They had determined where they wanted to um, dig See. the borehole. And I, I said to him that it's not possible. First of all, you have to give me written notice. And then we have to look at the results, make sure that there's no more hydrocarbon in the water before we move forward and do anything like that. PMS contains something called, it contains a lot of things, but one of the things that are of most concern is BTEX. So that's benzene, toluene, ethyl benzene, and xylene. Benzene is a known carcinogen. They're not researching it. It is known. It causes cancer. So you're not supposed to be exposed to it. The other three are heavy um, toxic materials. And then petrol also has, um, it can have he heavy metals in it. I don't have the MSDS for this, um, for the, or the technical data sheet for the particular um, PMS that is sold. Yeah, but I'm sure that that will also give us a, a bit more information. I've tried to look for it, but of course these things are not easy to find in Nigeria. I also called Nostra, and uh, my, my lawyer wrote to Nostra. They came and apparently the total, total never informed them. They are supposed to inform them, I think, within 24 hours or so. They never informed them that a leak had occurred. The nature of this thing is chronic rather than acute, so you won't see the results immediately. It's something that will manifest over time. So what I had asked for for myself, and I remember clearly writing um, affected residents, not just myself, my family, my immediate neighbors, and the other affected residents, is medical immediate medical evaluation. They must take a baseline, and then they must manage us over a period of years. Um, that can be agreed upon at a meeting.